Welcome to Trevera Tip Tuesday. In case you missed it, last week we talked about how to look your best on a conference call or webinar. So if you hate being on video and you wish you looked better, be sure to check it out. I am Christina Stetter. I'm the EVP here at Trevera. And this week we are doing a follow-up to last week's webinar, which was about how sales and marketing can work together to produce more and better leads. In that webinar, we talked about the inbound marketing concept and we wanted to dive more into that. So once again, I am with Jamie Reinhardt from Team Trevera. Jamie, can you introduce yourself? Sure, hi, I'm Jamie. Uh, I am the Senior VP of Business Development for Trevera and I've worked here for almost five years. Awesome. All right, so always worth mentioning, we are at home, obviously, and we have little people and pets. So if you hear anything in the background, uh, try to ignore it. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right, so let's um, think about this. So we started talking about this topic actually two weeks ago. Jamie and I did a Tip Tuesday, but that part of the conversation centered on planning on how to get sales and marketing to work together. So if you didn't see that, you might wanna go back and check that one out. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to integrate inbound marketing into your sales process. Because although it's called inbound marketing, it's really something that salespeople can absolutely get behind. Right, Jamie? Oh, yeah, totally agree. Uh, current state of sales presents new but really solvable challenges. Buyers are more prepared when they walk into a meeting because, they, because of all the research they've done without even talking to a salesperson like me. Which is a really good thing, actually. Buyers know more and they expect a more sophisticated sale with actual strategic advice on their own particular situation, which means buyers and sellers are much, much more educated, um, a much higher level of conversation going on. By the time sales teams get a meeting, buyers expect a high level of knowledge about the situation. They want custom solutions. They want to have a talk about them, not just what I what, you know about my company or what I do. The good news is this gives the edge to the smart, prepared sales teams. Um, you can get, you can win just by being prepared. Uh, it wouldn't, and wouldn't it really be great to understand how prospects have educated themselves through the content on your site and how many times they've actually visited the site? That would be awesome. It would be. And the cool thing is when you implement an inbound marketing platform, um, particularly we're thinking about HubSpot right here, you can figure that stuff out. So it's really cool. Once someone has told you who they are on your website by filling out a form, you can essentially look back on their browsing history with mm -hmm. your website. So you can see which pages they visited, what other documents they downloaded, how much time they've spent on your site, all sorts of interesting things. Now you can't see this, it's important to note, you can't see this until someone has given up their identity because we, it's just not possible to creep on people like that. It's unethical it, mm -hmm. and, it, and it can't be done. But once someone has told you who they are, it's perfectly okay to see what they're doing. So um, because marketing is really about reaching out to current and potential customers to solve their problems and about educating people, a marketer cares about the business's goals and the bottom line and using this information, you can really impact these things because the bottom line matters, right, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, sales cares about that as well. So, you know, if you want your sales and marketing team to work together, you need to come up with a plan. Learn, and, and we actually uh, talked about that earlier on our Tip Tuesday from a couple of weeks back. So go watch Tip Tuesday number eight if you wanna learn how to come up with that plan. Um, but don't jump into this without doing any planning. You're gonna end up making a ton of busy work for people and there's not gonna be any real goals or strategy behind it. So take some time in that planning stage. It's super duper important. and It's really gonna help you in the long run. But once you have that plan, then you have to implement it. That's right. So the first thing that you need to do if you're interested in getting started on implementing this strategy is you absolutely have to do some keyword research so that you can understand what are people searching for because it might not be what you think. Now at Trevera, we use some paid tools which give us really in-depth information that brings insights with, that you almost wouldn't believe to clients. But there are some free things that you can do and so I wanna show those to you so that if you're trying to do this on your own, you can at least get started or have more information than you might do if you were just trying to take everything out of your own head. Mm -hmm. So let me do a quick screen share here. All right, so the first thing that you're doing is you're going to use Google Trends. 
And that's especially important right now with everything that's going on in the world, all this COVID stuff, a lot of things are changing. So you can see what I've done here is I've done a search on the word contactless. This is actually something I discovered earlier this week when I was doing some client work. And you can see that here's the search volume going back to May 26th of 2019. And then all of a sudden there's this huge spike. Now, if you think about that, that absolutely makes sense, but it's great to see that spike. The other thing you can do is you can see right here, it says compare. So you could compare a bunch of similar words. I'll just enter, um, I'm gonna put webinar in here. That's not really a comparative word, but. Um, all right, so now you can see, wow, look at that. Like webinar has so much search volume and it spiked so high, it makes contact lists look like nothing's happening with it. So that's really an interesting thing you can do. Um, you can compare, I think it's up to four or five terms. So let me throw in here e-commerce because that's another thing that people have been asking us about a lot as they try to figure out how to sell literally everything online. And you can see here now, so e-commerce is somewhere in the middle. So that's a really great way that you can see which words are trending up and down. So if you're trying to get in on something, especially when things are volatile, that's a great way to figure that stuff out. Another thing that you can do is this is a free tool. Um, it's called Uber Suggest. So you can see that right here. Um, so if you just search Uber Suggest, it'll help you find this website. And you can put in a search term. So right here, I've entered SEO, which is obviously something that's very applicable to Trevera. And it will show you a little information about this keyword. So I can see that there are an average of 135,000 searches on this term every month. Uh, what the difficulty would be if I were to try to rank for this term, that's a 70, so that means it would be pretty tough. Uh, paid difficulty, so what are you gonna have to do if you were trying to buy this as a ad term? And then I guess about the cost per click of $12.27. It also does show you the search trend, compares mobile and desktop value. Down here, it gives you additional keyword ideas. Now you can see by looking at this that some of these keyword ideas, for example, soul or soul population are not necessarily related to SEO. That part is really interesting, especially if you think somebody is searching for a search term. Sometimes what you get in here will show you that people are actually using that word in a different way than you think they might be. And then down here, it will give you content ideas. So this will show you articles that are ranking really well for that search term. Now, normally it will show you how many people typically visit that website. You can see that that's not working. That is one of the disadvantages, unfortunately, to a free tool, but this is still pretty informative and can be helpful to you. So I would really suggest trying one of those two tools. The other thing you can do is you could do a Google search on whatever term you want, but be sure to use an incognito window. Do not do it using your normal Chrome browser because search results are personalized to your search history. So if I search for something, what Google is going to show me is based upon what I've searched for before. So you need to get that search history out of there. You can also look at your Google Analytics and your Google Search Console data to understand how people are finding your site and what to do with it. And then be sure to share all of this information with your sales team because they can help you make sense of what happens in a meeting with a prospect. Yeah, it's uh, super important for the sales teams to listen to the marketing on this. Um, it's information, it's data, it's coming from you know reliable sources, but sometimes it might fly in the face of what the sales team you know might think. Uh, so Christine, I think you had an example or you're talking about an example with me earlier. Oh, yes. Awesome. So we used to have a client that was in the information technology space. And one of the words that they used internally was desktop support related to, I have a problem, I go ask somebody for help with my desktop computer. Totally makes sense the way they were using it. But when we did keyword research on that, we discovered that the words desktop support from an SEO standpoint were related to things like ergonomic mouse pads, ergonomic desks, mm -hmm. chair assistants, things like that. And so from a search standpoint, that was a terrible keyword because they were gonna get lumped in with a bunch of other unrelated searches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's one of the things that you just have to work with your marketing team, have good conversations and trust, you know, trust what they're telling you because you want people to find, you know, your website and fill out the contact form and, and that sort of thing. Um, sales also needs to help marketing 
you know, understand what customers know and, and what they don't know and what confuses them during the first meeting, you know, because it's going to help marketing develop better materials to bridge the gap between prospect um, research and that first meeting with sales. Yeah, that can make a big difference. You know, Huge difference. If, if we understand what you need, we can develop materials that provide consistency and that work for the entire sales team. So you're not doing a ton of one-off campaigns with each salesperson because that creates a lot of busy work for the marketing team and means that nothing will be as thoughtful as it should be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting those materials developed is really important. But one of the other big challenges that you and I talk about a lot is following up. Yep, I totally agree. You know, the sales cycle can be very long. Um, you know, once I identify a prospect, I need to categorize them into different tiers. You know, we evaluate the prospects regularly and communicate with them based on what tier there are. So it's already getting complex. That's a lot of management that goes on to that type of prospecting. Um, it's super successful because you're communicating with people based off of, you know, where you see them in the sales cycle, but it's, it's a lot of work. Moving prospects around in the CRM and making sure we communicate with them properly based on their tier, um, can be helpful or can be helped out via tools and inbound marketing platforms um, is becoming making that become so much more easier. Uh, that's why as a sales guy, I love inbound marketing. Yeah. If you're not familiar with inbound, let me just take a minute and explain that. So basically what you do is you create assets that help educate people so they can move themselves through the sales funnel because that's what people do. They move themselves at least halfway down the sales funnel on their own. And then you're going to take your highest value asset. So something that really provides a lot of in-depth knowledge and educates people, and you're going to gate that on your site. So by gated, I mean you're going to put it on your site, and in order for somebody to get that asset, usually it's like a white paper or an ebook, something really comprehensive, they have to fill out a form and give up their personal information. And then once they've done that, they go on an email list, and they will start to get automated emails. And the email that they get next depends on what they did with the email that you just sent. So if they open it, one thing happens. If they don't open it, another thing happens. If they convert, so maybe for Trevera, the conversion might be fill out a contact form on our site and tell us you want to do business with us. If they fill that out, it will remove them from the workflow so that I'm not inadvertently bothering someone that Jamie is already talking to. Um, and and it provides intelligent follow-ups with people, which can make it easier for Jamie because he doesn't have to spread himself so thin trying to call people or personally email them as often. And that sounds really simple, right? <laughs> but usually what happens is people get stuck trying to figure out those actual workflows, what to send, what happens next, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really where sales can help out because we're – you know, selling all the time. Um, sales teams can explain, you know, the typical follow-up uh, process, so you know kind of where to start and what works, um, what they found doesn't work, and where they need help or where the sales teams need help closing uh, sales, which is, you know, super important, and where they don't. So um, another really important thing is to let marketing know how long the sales cycle is. Uh, if you if it's a typically a really long sales cycle, then you know that can help build a workflow that's going to touch the prospects at different points in time and help move that sale along. Right. Yeah, this information is super helpful to marketing because then we can figure out how many emails, how often should they be sent, what information should be included. And then we can also figure out, does the one that starts with a white paper and the prospect fills it out themselves, is that what you need? Or maybe do you need something where you're actually adding people to a workflow manually? So for example, if Jamie's talking to somebody and they're interested in doing business with us, but maybe not until next year, it would be, it's helpful for him to have a workflow that keeps in touch with them maybe just every couple of months. Mm -hmm. And he can put them manually into a workflow like that. Or does he want to have a workflow for after an event? or a cold call follow-up. So understanding what the sales team needs can help marketing generate something that works across the board for everybody and really make follow-up a lot easier. Yes, yes, these things really help with follow-up uh, with prospects, which is always a very difficult thing for salespeople. Um, I'm in the interesting position of doing business development for a marketing agency, so I can kind of see both sides uh, of this and where things often go wrong. Um, you know, sometimes uh, every sales person in your organization might want something slightly, just slightly different, 
or uh, sales needs a new campaign for every little situation. Um, these small individual marketing efforts are hard to implement and track, um, which you know we want to keep tracking up on everything, and end up holding salespeople back from doing what they need to do, which is closing the sale. Um, it can be super efficient to partner with marketing uh, to see an existing if an existing asset or workflow um, from a different sales effort is going to work. Um, it's efficient. It keeps marketing content and ideas working for the business, which is uh, you know good for money for the company too, and it helps speed up the sales process. So partnering with marketing on things like that is just it's really important and very very efficient. It help, helps the deals uh, go by a lot a lot smoother. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, where marketing can really help sales is by providing that consistency. Yeah. Consistency is really good in marketing. And so every time you make a change or you have a one-off campaign, it's almost like reintroducing your brand, depending on how big the change is. And marketing wants to help the sales team by supporting and reinforcing the brand, not making them reintroduce the brand every time. So being consistency, I don't want to say boring, but be consistent. It's good. So hopefully you have enough information now that you can get started on planning your partnership between sales and marketing. Remember, we have two other resources right on YouTube or at Trevera.com that can help you with that. So we have the Tip Tuesday from two weeks ago, and we have a 45-minute webinar that you can watch that really gets more in-depth on this process. So be sure to check one of those resources out. And of course, come back to Trevera.com or check out our YouTube channel next Tuesday at noon where we post digital marketing tips every single week. So thank you so much, Jamie, for revisiting this topic. And um, I really, really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Christina. It was fun. Bye. <laughs>